Hello everyone, today we are going to learn how to make a 0.8 red cell suspension for use of gel blood banking technology um, in two different ways. So we're going to learn how to make it from a three to five red cell suspension that you would use with the tube method um, into a 0.8, but we're also going to learn how to do a 0.8 immediately from the packed red cells in your spun EDTA tube. So let's go ahead and get started. What you're going to notice is right here I have a tube that says plasma. I usually have my students pull out the plasma off of the top of the um, patient specimen because we have limited number of specimens and if you mess up pulling out the plasma and the red cells get resuspended in there, you can kind of just chuck that part um, and you've saved the rest of the liquid gold, right? Um, so this is where everybody gets pretty much um, messed up when you get closer to that buffy coat. Okay, so I still have I still have my plasma, but see, we have a little bit, the camera's not really picking up, but so a little bit of liquid right above the cells. So if I wanted to pull that up, I might, see, I might pull up some red cells. And that's what ends up happening uh, with students. And then they put it right in the plasma and then it's messed up and you have to, um, you have to mitigate from that. So what you could do is you could, um, if you put these red cells in there, you could spin it down and pull off the plasma um, that way, put it in a fresh tube, or you um, uh, you could have not put it in there in the first place and just throw it away like I'm going to do. Okay, so um, that went in the red trash can. All right, so now I have my packed red cells. Uh, you've seen this before in the making the red cell suspension video. Um, notice that I have another uh, tube here. That's because I'm going to um, pull some out here. And this is probably what your professor does in order to give you an antibody to identify. I pull that out because I'm going to add antibody to it later for another video so we can do gel testing. All right, so now let's do our three to five um, percent cell suspension from my patient's packed red cells. So I'm put, I'm squeezing. So you squeeze the bulb. I'm squeezing the bulb. I'm putting it all the way down into the red cells, and I'm pulling up packed red cells. Okay, I don't need to worry about the plasma because I already took it took it off, and I had it uh, the bulb squeezed before I started. So I'm going to do one to two drops. Um, that's going to be a bubble, so I'll put that back in here. Um, so I'm going to do uh, two drops because usually we end up having to add more anyway, uh, and then I'm going to add my saline. So here I've got my saline. I'm going to squeeze it in there. We're gonna fill it all the way up to three quarters of the way up the tube. Okay, and this, at this point, you can take your check cells, which have been in my reagent stacker, and notice it's separated. So you want to resuspend those cells, and I like to compare my red cell suspension to the checked the check cells uh, for the tube method okay when we get to the gel part we're going to end up comparing it to a gel reagent right because this is a this is a three to five percent cell suspension even though it doesn't say that right at the front okay the front of the label Okay, so if I can still see red on the bottom, I still have not removed all the cells and resuspended them into the solution. So what you can do is squeeze gently, and that's going to resuspend. Okay, so now I have something to compare it to. I did not resuspend this already, and that's a common problem. Um, it's looking really good though, uh, but what I want to do is resuspend before I compare, and that way, oh, did you see that? See the red cells are coming up 
they kind of settled at the bottom. Look at that. Um, see, there's some on the side of the tube. So I want to make sure to resuspend all those cells. See, now they disappeared. All right, so now we don't have to worry about that common error of, oh my gosh, you don't have enough red cells in there. It's because you didn't resuspend first, right? So now let's take a quick look. Let's compare. Oh, that looks really, really good. All right, so we can now use this red cell suspension for tube testing, right? So um, what, what we do in our lab is we do tube testing for blood typing every time. The gel cards are super expensive to buy for the uh, blood typing, so we, we always go with tube. So since that's the case, and that's the first part of required testing by AABB, then um, since you already have this made, what we can do is make a 0.8% cell suspension from your three to five, and that kind of saves you a step maybe, um, because you know this, uh, this one's already really good. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we wanna just make sure to resuspend this real quick. And I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm going to prepare my uh, pipette. So what I'm going to do is take 50 microliters of the three to five cell suspension and I'm going to put it in here and then put 150 microliters into um, there of saline. So normal blood bank saline. So I got my, I got my tip on there. I'm um, pushing it down uh, and putting it into the tube making sure the tip's all the way in the tube before releasing and pulling up. So you can charge the pipette tip here, all right? And now I'm going to dispense it into the 0.8. You're gonna notice that's not a lot. You know, it's a micro, it's a micro amount, right? Now I'm going to add 150 microliters using a different tip and a diff different pipette because that one doesn't go all the way up to 200. So I've got my tip on and I'm going to use that blood bank saline I had earlier. I'm pulling the top off of it, twisting off the top and just going into the top from the open top, okay? So, charging the tip again. All right, and and now I've got my 150. Hold on a second. All right, we're gonna try this again. Okay, so I got my tip. I'm pressing down, and there's. There's my 150. Now I'm going to expel it into the 0.8. All right. And I can still use the same tip if I wanted to in order to resuspend. And eject the tip off. Okay, so now what you're gonna see is look how much um, lighter that is. Obviously it's a less amount, but we went from a three to 5% to a 0.8, all right? And if we look at the reagents, you can see the difference in those as well. So this is for gel, okay? and that's the 0.8%, and this is the tube, and that's the three to 5%. So you can see, um, I think the camera's picking it, picking it up pretty good, um, but this is lighter than this one, okay? So when you put uh, this into a gel or your 0.8 in your auto control, 
uh, you'll see you'll see that it looks extremely light and you're thinking, oh my gosh, something's wrong. Uh, it doesn't look as dark as the tube does. Uh, I'll show you <laughs> what a three to 5% uh, cell suspension looks like in gel and you'll see why we don't use it. <laughs> All right, so let's go in ahead and try the second version of making the 0.8% because you have options in the lab. You have different ways to make things. Obviously, you still have to follow the correct procedure, but you have different ways of making the same thing. All right, so I'm going to pull my red cell, um, packed red cell pipette out. And uh, so for this one, we're going to do uh, 10 microliters of the red cells, the packed red cells from the patient specimen, and we're going to do 1,000 microliters, which is also known as one mil, one milliliter, right, um, of the saline. Okay, so let's go ahead and make that one too. Obviously, we're going to have uh, more volume in this one than we will of this one because of the, um, the volumes that we're using. So let's go ahead and get our 10. So 10 microliters. There we go. We're focusing now. All right, notice the decimal is in the middle, so this isn't 100, this is 10. Okay, so uh, I put my tip on, and we're getting the 10 microliters of the packed RVCs from the original specimen tube. Okay, this could get really messy. All right, so you get all the way down to the bottom. And notice, I didn't charge the tip, so I've got a lot of bubbles in there, all right? So make sure you charge the tip when you go to do anything with a micro pipette. Or... Okay, let's try this again. All right, well, we still look like we're having trouble. Okay, there might might be a clot or something in there. Uh, let me check it out. Okay, there was no clot, but I did get my um, I did get my tip full, and here we go. We're going to put it in there. Notice though that you do have a very nasty looking uh, pipette after going immediately in there and that's because of it bumping up against you know all of the inside of the tube so i'm going to clean my pipette so my preference honestly is to do the um to do this from the red cell suspension because it it's less dirtying <laughs> of your equipment uh, the analyzers in a clinical laboratory, um, they would end up, the fully automated ones would end up um, having a probe that does this for you. Okay, so that is um, that right there. And we're going to do, fifth, uh, sorry, 100, where did you go? 100 microliters, whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, camera's not picking up. 100 microliters of the saline. All right, so 100 microliters of the saline. Okay, you can mix this as well. As such, make sure you're getting all of the cells off of the side of the tube. And now you can see it is much lighter, just like the just like the reagent. Okay, so for pure volume, uh, this is more beneficial to use because you get more more bang for your buck out of making the red cell suspension. All right, uh, get that off of the back. I didn't see that part. Um, 
So here, let's take, let's take a look. Okay, that looks like that matches. All right, so um, we absolutely will get more volume if we do the, it from the original specimen. Uh, if you don't need as much of a volume, you could always do it um, from the three to five. Either way works out, all right? And that is how you make a three, uh, sorry, a 0.8% suspension for use with um, the gel method. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please subscribe and uh, you'll uh, have to set your notifications so that you get a notification every time there's a new video. Thank you. Bye.